And thank you for joining us here at DSG. My name is Jessica Respondak. I'm with the DSG education team. And it is now my pleasure to introduce Corey McLaughlin. Corey has been, oops, Corey has been a banker for 20 years and practiced in the fields of personal, small business, business commercial, and corporate banking. In 2011, he started specializing in healthcare banking with a primary focus on dental and veterinarian industries. Corey sat as the healthcare chair for TD Bank in Tampa Bay, overseeing the implementation of the dental lending program for three years before joining Freedom Bank in 2015. At Freedom Bank, his role is to build the dental and veterinarian lending divisions from the ground up, which included the loan products, credit policy, and underwriting guidelines, as well as marketing and implementation plans. And with that, Corey, would you please take it away? Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. For um, Let me just start by saying, if you are a dentist on this call and you plan on borrowing money at any point during the future, then pay attention because I'm going to help you. Um, there's a lot of things that you need to know, things that are happening, um, pitfalls that you have probably fallen into. And if you give me about 25 minutes today, I will talk real fast and get you on the way to your weekend. Um, I'm passionate about this. I want to help you all. And I just want to show you a few tools you can use to better have the knowledge to take more control of your own banking relationship. Um, this is who I am. They've already sort of went over this. I mean, besides this, I have, uh, I have a graduate degree at an executive banking and finance from LSU. And I think what's more important, the real reason why I would do this is because not only have I specialized in dental lending for nine years, my best friend is an orthodontist of 30 years. My other friends, my drinking partners, my travel companions, my ski buddies, are generals, endos, and perios. And so I am very passionate. I, on a business-wise and on a personal level, I'm surrounded by dentists. And so I sort of want to give back to a community that has provided a nice living to my family and I, especially over the last nine years. Um, today's topics, what is the most important document that you guys have never read? Why is asking what, the, what is the interest rate? Why is that the worst question you can ask? And then prepayment penalties and loan covenants. The, the devil is in the details. And let's just get right into it. So when you are a business owner and you sign business docs, these are the, the general documents that you are signing, okay? The promissory note, that has the rate. You do want to read that. You want to check your rate. And then these other things are, if it's real estate, there's a mortgage. You're going to do personal guarantees, corporate guarantees. If there's real estate in an LLC and your operating company is paying it, that's what the assignments of rents and leases is. But the business loan agreement is the number one document that you should read. So what I would say is this, when that banker sits those 300 pages in front of you, if you read the front page of your promissory note and check the rate, and then you read this document, which is probably only four to six pages, you know, the rest of it is pretty standard. But if you just read those two, instead of not reading nothing at all, it would really sort of change the dynamics of what you're getting into. A loan agreement. So here are all the things that you're going to find on a business loan agreement. And the good thing about a business loan agreement is that most of this stuff sort of encaptures everything about the entire transaction. So you have all those other documents, but most of it is actually caught and summarized on a business loan agreement. So the parties and contracts going to be the name and the addresses involved. Um, the facility and purpose. What that means is, you know, you're borrowing $500,000 for the purpose of buying a dental practice. Um, whatever that is, you're borrowing $750,000 to purchase real estate. So it will tell you the amounts on here too and the purpose of it. It'll tell you the address of the real estate. The conditions, um, it'll tell you, most of them will tell you the interest and the amount of time. So not all of them have the interest rate, which is why you want to check your promissory note. Uh, but a lot of times it will even have that on here. So again, this one document kind of takes bits and pieces of every other document. But what's most important about this document that you want to take a look at are um, number one, the prepayment. 
Um, and just so you know, banks hide the prepayment language in, in two separate things. They'll hide the prepayment in the business loan agreement but you also want to check your promissory note, which is what I have in here. And then you want to compare the two because there could be language in each one and you want to make sure you read both of them before you sign anything. And then, you know, here are the things that you really want to read. The covenants. We call those the teeth of the deal, the rules of the road. These are the rules that you are agreeing to follow should you take the bank's money. And again, I will tell you this, out of the last 50 dental deals I've done, uh, you know how many people have actually asked to read this document? None. Now, fortunately, I'm an ethical banker and I will actually go through the teeth because I want my people to know in advance what they're getting into, but I also am not hiding anything from my borrowers either, which is not always necessarily the case. Um, the case I'm going to make today is the big bank, versus sort of the community bank. I work at a community bank and there are major differences between the, biz, the big bank mentality and a community bank. This is going to be a very pro community bank type talk, but at the end of this, I think you're gonna understand why. Um, evidence of default. Um, you need to be able to read in there to say, when can a bank default my loan and what does that mean? A bank defaulting a loan means we're gonna send you a letter that says basically you have 30 days to correct your actions or you need to pay us in full. And here's a big mistake that borrowers think and it's simply not true. You don't have to miss a payment for a bank to default you. The rules of the road of how a bank can default you are in your business loan agreement. But don't think just because you didn't miss a payment that they can't default you, they can't. Um, and the other thing is remedies and the default. So these are things that are very key. Again, they're the rules of the road that the bank is saying you have to follow. So you want to read this in advance of signing anything and you want to ask questions to make sure you understand what that is. Um, so does the bank have you by the throat? Well, you're not going to know unless you actually read the actual covenants that you have in there. So the title, covenants, affirmative covenants, negative covenants, default, other defaults, additional requirements, okay? These are all the names that the big bank is going to hide the rules of the road in, okay? So it's not just covenants, there's all these other titles that you might find in a business loan agreement, and if you see any of these, you wanna read all of them. Um, when you see the actual, what I have copied and pasted here, and it looks a little small, hard to read, just so you know, I have copied and pasted this directly out of a loan document. Um, this is something called, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It, it's a standard document under a million that all banks kind of use. Um, and so I've taken this out of one of ours. But again, if it looks like it's small and it's hard to read, I'm not telling you that that's not intentional. Um, at the top of this, you know, the one thing you're going to need that you're always going to see is the bank is going to require these days, anything post 2007 to 2009, you got to send financials on an annual basis. That's required to do. It's because the federal banking regulations and the auditors require that we do it so that we're setting aside the right amount of capital in case there's risk involved. But the bottom ones are some of the ones that you need to look at that people put in there and that if you don't know what they are, um, it could cause a problem. So there's a global debt service coverage and a pre-distribution debts coverage. That basically tells us, tells you how profitable you have to be or how much money that you can distribute out of your company before you're in trouble with the bank. Now, what most of you do, and this is fine, right after you close a loan with the bank, usually within a week or two, you'll get, hey, can I get those loan documents? My CPA wants to see them. When you send this stuff over, this is what your CPA is looking for because when they do your books on an annual basis, they're going to look at these covenants and they're going to write your books to go ahead and match this so that's not a problem. So this usually doesn't become that much of an issue. But you know, here are some of the other ones. One of the ones that the big banks do a lot of times, and I'm not gonna say what the big banks' names are because I'm not going to get sued here, uh, but think of like the biggest bank in Canada that you see around here and think of like a big bank in America that you might see here. This are typical type things that they do every day, all the time. 
Um, one of the ones is the additional requirements. And you'll find this in a lot of dental transactions that it will say no further borrowings in excess of 25,000 without approval from the bank. So what they're saying is maybe you borrowed a half a million, a million dollars, but if you want to borrow money from another bank to, for an equipment loan, or you want to use a finance company, or you think you're going to another bank to go ahead and get some money, um, what this is saying is that you got to go back to your bank first. You have to ask their permission. And this is probably about 90% of the dental transactions from the big banks that'll be in there. It might not be 25, it might be 50,000, it could be 75,000, but generally it's around 25,000. And basically what they're doing is they're forcing you to go back to them for them to give you permission and then they're gonna give you their proposal. If they wanna lend the money and you're doing everything right, it's really just a way for the bank that's holding your notes already to get more business out of you. Um, depository accounts, listen, and these days, wherever your primary banking is, you got to have, where, wherever you've borrowed the most amount of money, that's probably where you're going to have to have your deposit accounts. That's just, you're not getting out of that these days because banks are under too much pressure from the federal auditors and stuff like that to be able to watch these things. And the best way to watch a loan is to have the deposit account. I won't get into that right now. It's a banking thing. Um, another thing that you want to look at is cross defaults. Let's say you borrowed a half a million dollars two years ago, and now you want to borrow $100,000. And that $100,000, they might put in there that they're going to cross default it with the other loan that they have. And so, you know, in other words, let's say you miss a payment on one loan, but you have two other loans. If you miss a payment and go into default on that one loan, you can still have paid on a regular basis on the other loans, but once you default on one, you default on all. Um, this is again, this is another general big bank tactic. It's not always, I put these on some of my clients in the right situations, but it's certainly something that you wanna know and it's certainly something that you wanna have dialogue about before you sign. Changing subjects, because I'm trying to go fast for you all here on a Friday afternoon. And I, and I think for any of you that are listening right now, um, that have already sort of, you know, tuned out, pay attention to the next couple of slides because this, you know, really might be the most important. So what happens is here is let's say this happens a lot on acquisition lending. You know, what happens is a dentist is trying to buy another practice and they call me and they say, what's the interest rate? And you quote them an interest rate. And then they say, um, and let me give you an example. Let's say that you call me for a million dollars and I say it's 4% and you call another bank and they say 4.25%. And then you call a big bank and they say 2.75%. What do you think? Oh, well, 2.75, I got the best deal in town. Um, one of the things I would say about that, if you, if you call three banks and one of them is giving you a rate that is so far lower than the other ones, I would question it, okay? And I'm going to give you a point of reference that you can use. This is not 100% accurate, but if somebody gives you a rate, and let's say it's 2.75%, I would Google Wall Street Journal Prime rate today because Wall Street Journal Prime is what all banks sort of lend off of. The, you know, the Wall Street Journal Prime is kind of the basis. It incurs all of our costs and, and the bank's borrowing. And then usually on Wall Street Journal Prime, there's a plus, and that could be plus a quarter, plus one, plus 2%. That's the profitability for the bank. So if today Wall Street Journal Prime, I think is 3.25%. So if you get a loan and somebody says it's 2.75 and it's a half a percent below Wall Street Journal Prime, um, it's probably not profitable to the bank or barely profitable to the bank. And the bank is not in the business of losing money or being barely profitable, just like you're not in the business of owning a business to barely make it by. So a couple of things. If you get three rates and one is one or 2% lower, uh, don't think you got the best deal in town. You, you better question it a little bit further. So what is a loss leader? So a loss leader is a pricing strategy where a product is sold at a price below its market cost to stimulate other sales. 
And so typically we find this in retail in the supermarkets and I'm just gonna completely make this up. But let's say, you know, the grocery store is selling organic bananas for 10 cents a piece. Now, it costs a grocery store more than 10 cents for that organic banana but they're willing to bring you in and sell you that product at a loss because they know you're going to put 10 or 15 other things in your cart and that's where they're going to make the money. It's a trap. They are basically saying, look over here while they're getting you over here, okay? Unfortunately, we have seen this in recent years in banking and it comes from the big banks. The big banks use this all the time. So again, in a scenario, where let's say I offered you 5% and the big bank said 3%, the first thing I would do is go to Wall Street Journal Prime and Google it. Okay, so Wall Street Journal Prime is 3.25, but I'm getting offered a rate below that. So is that profitable to the bank? Hmm, probably not. And so I would have more questions in regards to this. And again, why is the other bank so high compared to this? But the problem is, once the doctors generally hear that 3% rate, they tune everything else out. And that, my friends, in lies where the bank gets to take advantage of you. Because if the only question you're asking is what is the interest rate, then they've gotten you on all their ancillary products. All those other banking products that you're gonna put in your cart because you bought that loss leader of a rate, that's where they're making their money. So what other questions should you be asking? So, I mean, the bank account monthly fees, you wanna know what they are, but be careful because the big bank, if you ask what the fees are, they're gonna send you this pamphlet that looks like Chinese hieroglyphics that you don't even understand because you don't, you don't understand banking. So it, it's really hard for you to go ahead and understand and speak in a language that we bankers speak. If you don't, I, I don't, I don't speak dental, but you probably don't speak banking. Um, you might want to ask, is this an analyzed account? Big banks are famous for analyzed accounts. So what does that mean? An analyzed account means every single transaction that happens out of your account, whether that be an ACH debit, an ACH credit, a check, your payroll, everything has a price tag. Nothing is free. And it may look like 15 cents, 16 cents a transaction. But those transactions for like a million dollar dental practice, they add up. Um, what are the online fees? What are the merchant fees? Are your merchant fees negotiable? You need to know this. You see, what happens is when the big bank gives you that loss leader and you're so in awe about this great rate that you stop asking all the other questions. But generally what happens when you go to a big bank, okay, and they give you that rate and you don't even know it's a loss leader, okay, you don't get to negotiate the merchant, but you are required to use it. You're required to use their merchant services, their credit card processing. You have to use their accounts, you have to use their treasury management, and you don't get to negotiate any of this. But the problem is, is that you all aren't even asking the questions to negotiate it, and they know that, and that's where they get you. Um, the biggest one here that we wanna talk about is, is there a prepayment penalty? Okay, because if there is a prepayment penalty, the reason why is because they might be losing money on the loan, so they have to keep you long enough to get their money back, and that's what the prepayment penalty is. Um, what about your next loan? That is not a question you can actually ask, but here's what I can tell you. There is, when you take that first loan, that loss leader, because the rate was so good, you just couldn't resist, and you have a prepayment penalty, let me tell you, because you've got that borrowing requirement that you got to go back to the bank to ask them permission to borrow. And they're going to say yes, as long as you're running a healthy practice, but you're going to get their rate. And that second rate or that third rate, yeah, it's not a loss leader. They're getting their money back on you. Prepayment penalties. So what is a prepayment penalty? And again, let's go back. You need to read your business loan agreement and your promissory note. But listen to the definition. A prepayment penalty ensures that the lender can recoup interest, fees, costs, and expenses put out on the loan 
in the event the borrower wants to pay off the loan early, okay? Fees, expenses. So banks, when they put stuff on the books, we have to set aside capital for the government. Um, we have hard costs. It costs them money for somebody like me to go ahead and process, go through the approval to have underwriters and stuff. So there are real costs that a bank has. Um, some of the prepayment penalties that we see out there is, you know, the 10987654321. So let's say you borrow money to, to, for a piece of equipment that's 10 years. That means if you've been paying on it for four years and year seven, you're going to pay 7% fee to get out of it. Okay, that, that's a harsh one. The 54321 and 321, at least if you're going to do prepayment, are a little bit more palatable. Um, the three, two, one, especially, I'm not saying that a bank doesn't have a right to do something like that, depending on the situation. Um, but if I were you, I would negotiate never to have one. The three, two, one, be very careful because there are bankers out there that are not always truthful. And a, a dentist might say, hey, what's the prepay? And the person says, it's a three, two, one. Oh, no problem. If you don't read your business loan agreement and your promissory note, what banks have out there is a 321, 321, 321, 321. And what that means is you thought 321 and you're done, but in year four, let's say that you want to pay it off, what you don't realize is that the prepayment penalty is back to 3%. This one happens all the time. So that's why you have to read, is it really a 321 and then you're done? Or is it a 321, 321, 321? Because you don't want that one. This is the biggest one. So the big bank special, I call it. So when a bank gives you a loss leader and they are losing money on the actual loan itself, okay, then they have to give you a prepayment penalty off of the original dollar. So again, you have a million dollar loan. You have been paying for seven years on it and you owe 300,000 left. And now you want to go to another bank, you want to refinance, the bank wants to give you an offer, you use a better rate. Well, you're, you're not paying that one, two or 3% off of the 300,000 you currently owe. You're going to pay it off of the million dollars, okay? Because they're not done feeing your way out of this. You're, you know, you're, they're, they're not done feeing you yet because the loan isn't profitable. And so they have to make sure that you, they keep you long enough to get enough fees to make it profitable to the bank. So you need to read to make sure that, listen, if you want to go into a prepay and it's declining and it's off your current balance, that's one thing. But the original dollar amount, the big bank special, you do not want that. They're trapping you in there. Are you being held hostage by your bank? What is the ransom? So just understand this, the moment that you sign up for a prepayment, the only way you can get out of it is to buy your way out of it. You have to buy your way out of the prepay. And you're going to do that by one, paying them one, two or 3% on whatever balance, or you're gonna stay with them and they're gonna to continue to fee you and fee you and fee you and fee you because that prepayment is in there they know you're not leaving. They get to continue to fee you. Um, the only way out of, let me say it again, out of a prepayment penalty is you got to buy your way out of it. That's plain and simple. So don't sign up for one. On all of my deals that I do at Dental, I've never put a prepayment on a single one. But the big banks, they put it on every single one and 90% of them are off of the original dollar. So ask questions, read your loan documents. Now, for all of you dentists that are listening, that are already tuned me out, okay? If you tune back in, for I can sum it all up for you right here, okay? And before you say to yourself, oh, this is an exaggeration, this is not. This happens every single day. I lose deals all the time under this scenario. Okay, so I'm gonna give you an idea here. So let's say that the big bank is going to give you $500,000 at 4% over 10 years, okay? And I, at the little community bank, I'm going to give you 4.75% over 10 years. Now, let me give you some perspective here. At the big bank, let's say a big bank uh, here in America, 
okay? In my 21 years of banking and nine years in dental, the average $1 million in revenues dental practice at the big bank probably has fees of about $150 to $250 a month, okay? That's how much they're charging you on those analyzed accounts. For those of you on here right now, look at what you're being charged. 90% of the ones that fall in between $150 and $250 a month. At a community bank like mine, and not just mine, there are good banks out there. You know, I'll give you an example. At my bank, you get 500 free transactions for 11 bucks. And as long as you maintain more than $1,000, we waive that 11 bucks. So there are no fees, okay? So understand this, uh, the big bank, their payment is $5,075. Now my payment is $5,258. There's a $183 difference. Okay. However, the big bank, if you've got 150 to $250 in fees every single month on your account, do you understand that I might've given you the better deal already and you just don't know it? Okay. So my deal, these deals actually are almost equal. Okay. Because if you have $200 in fees, but you're paying me $183 a month, that three quarters of a percent that you thought you were saving, you're not saving. They're taking it back in fees because they gave you a rate that wasn't as profitable. And so they're going to ding you in other areas. Here's the big one. Okay. And so first of all, when it comes to the account fees and merchant services. So again, if you borrow money from a big bank and it's a substantial amount of money, they're going to make you use their merchant services. That's your credit card processing. Um, however, because they gave you that great rate, yeah, you don't actually get the price shop anymore. They're giving you whatever their merchant services fees are and whatever their percentages are. It's not a negotiation. Let me give you a comparison. At, when I give my dentist a commitment letter, I put first right of refusal on merchant. And so what that allows the, the dentist to do is to go out and get my proposal and two other proposals. And if mine's the best, I win. If they come back and they got a better deal at another bank, then I have a right to match it or they can use the lower merchant and I can pass on it. That's what you're looking for. So in this example, let's just say that your dental practice does one and a half million dollars in revenues a year, okay? And let's just say for simple math that $1 million of that 1.5 runs through check cards and credit cards. It would actually be a lot more, but I'm trying to keep the math simple. And let's just say, because you took that loss leader, now you can't negotiate your merchant fees. And let's just say that it is a half a percent higher than what another bank would have offered you, what I would have offered you. So on a million dollars running through at a half a percent, it is $5,000 a year more in fees, which maybe might not sound like a lot. You know, maybe you're paying 16,000 instead of 11,000 in fees, or it doesn't seem like that big on a million dollar, million and a half dollar practice, but let's get down to the numbers. In this scenario, because you had to use their merchant and because you couldn't price shop, $5,000 equals $416 a month difference. And that $416 is the equivalent to 1.75% difference in rate. It's 1.75% difference in rate. So if you take the account fees and you take the merchant fees, only just a $5,000 difference on an annual basis, what you really have is that 4% rate is actually 6.5%. And here's the problem. The difference between these also is on their deal, you still have that prepayment penalty. And on mine, because you could shop it around, there were no fees, you don't have a prepayment penalty. So, so many times I hear dentists say, hey, Corey, you offered me, you know, four and a half percent, but the big bank gave me 3%. I got a better deal. My response is, and I'm not being a smart ass. No, you didn't. You just don't know it. Okay. These are just two things. They're the primary things. But if you don't watch these two things and you don't ask questions and you don't have the ability to negotiate, that really low rate 
yeah, they're getting the money from you. They're just getting it in other areas. And because you're failing to ask the questions, well, they're getting away with it. And the question is, how much are you willing to pay to get out of this? Are you willing to pay one, two, or 3% on a million dollars to get out? No, most people won't. And so they're going to continue to get these fees out of you. And really the totality of it, they're getting a much higher rate than maybe somebody that had offered you a higher rate just on the loan, but gave you all the flexibility with no prepayment penalty. This is my last screen. Be careful because the big banks, and I can say their names because it's public knowledge, Bank of America and TD Bank will pay attorneys, brokers, and your CPAs that refer them business when they close loans a 1% referral fee up front. It's at closing. So think of it this way. If you got a broker deal and you, they sent the stuff over to Bank of America or to TD, just know that that bank did not pay that 1% referral fee out of the goodness of their heart. No, they paid it out of your back pocket and they didn't ask you for permission. And not only did they put that money out, so at closing on a million dollars, that broker CPA return is being paid $10,000. The bank is putting that money out on the day you close before they've made one penny of interest or fees off of you. So not only are they going to get that 1% broker fee paid back by you, they're also going to charge you interest on it and in in, by the way of fees because they didn't put that money out again out of the goodness of their heart. They put it out there because they know they're going to get it back and they're going to get fees on top of that. So in conclusion, read your business loan agreement, ask a lot of questions. The best rate does not mean it's the best deal and prepayments are bad. And with that, I thank you all for listening. I hope it was helpful. Feel free to call me anytime. Thank you so much, Corey. What a wealth of information that you gave everybody today and great protection. So everybody can look out uh, for what they need to look out for. Um, we are open up to any questions, comments, um, or feedback that you may have. And uh, Kristen, while we're waiting to see if anybody comes in, do you have any closing words? Oh, you're on mute. <laughs> Corey, thank you again for taking the time to educate doctors and just bring some exposure to something and some topics that are really relevant in the practice that they um, definitely may not have, have known about. So we really appreciate you helping to educate our client base. Um, again, for anyone that wants to reach out to Corey, I can personally vouch just for um, just his extreme professionalism and his true support for the dental community. So thank you, and thank you, Jessica, for coordinating the webinar for us. Thank you. Uh, thank you for bringing Corey here, uh, Kristen. And Kristen and Corey's information is um, located in the chat box. Corey is located right here in Florida in the greater Tampa Bay area. Corey, we do have a question. Uh, somebody said, name some community banks, please. Well, I don't know where this person is uh, located at. I mean, if you were sort of in Florida and like the Tampa Bay area, I mean, obviously there's Freedom Bank, um, there's Seacoast Bank um, here in Tampa Bay, like the Bank of Tampa, we have Cornerstone Bank. I mean, they're just, you know, you're, you're looking for the banks that only have a couple of branches and you could actually Google Community Bank um, in my area or community bank near me, just like you could Google Starbucks near me, you could Google community banks near me. I don't know what state this person is in, but I would go to Google. If you were in Tampa Bay, obviously I would say me first of all, but you know, Freedom, Seacoast, Bank of Tampa, Cornerstone, those are just some of the ones around here. And you just get better, you get better service out of community bank because here's the one point that I didn't bring up that I think it's important is that when you have a prepayment penalty, not only are you stuck, but the customer service generally goes down because the bankers know you're not going anywhere because you're not going to pay that much money to leave. And the thing with community bank, we pride ourselves on customer service. And when you always have the option, if you're not happy to leave, it sort of makes it more upon the, the banker to have that kind of customer service to be there for you. So Besides the financial thing, the customer service is better, but I would try Google because I don't know where you live. 
Thank you, Corey. And I agree. Any any service without a contract, you can always count on that great customer service because they want to keep you as a customer. So thank you for enlightening us today. We really appreciate your time and attention. Might have to bring you back uh, soon and maybe in fourth quarter as everyone closes out their years and looks forward to the next. So enjoy your Friday, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Uh, any closing words, Corey and Kristen? Nope, just thank you again for taking the time to join us. And we hope that you took something away from this fantastic webinar content. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. And don't forget to check out dentalservices.net backslash edu or our Facebook, LinkedIn pages and your email for the latest courses. Take care.